father here bringing you the next war recap for clan annihilated and as you can see it was a blowout 45 to 5 not only that it was the third perfect war 45 of 45 stars for the guys over at annihilated uh, they're just tearing it up uh, six and two start i believe with three perfect wars so great job to uh, the leaders over at that clan as well as the other players and uh, we'll go ahead and get into some of the three star attacks and to save the best for last we'll kind of start at the bottom and work our way up uh, starting with the lowest town hall eight and working our way up to the very top town hall nine so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This was the lowest Town Hall 8. And we have Tiger. Um, so we have that one. Good job there by Tiger Hawk. Uh, moving up to the number 8 base. Mr. Money's bringing kind of a combination. Dragoon uh, has a couple of barbs and archers. Figure out what he ends up using those for. But goes ahead and lights one of the ADs. Uh, that was a good choice because if you'd have gone, you never want to go in the middle one and split them unless you're doing a different style of attack and you don't want to have to go right at the air sweeper. So that is the right AD. Uh, goes ahead and gets a lure there with the balloon. You see, this was one of the bases that we had Clan Castle troops in. Um, level five wizards, it looks like. So just drags them out to the corner. And BK followed by the dragons. Now, I. Not sure I would have sacrificed a level 5 BK to Wizards. That wasn't the smartest thing. But you know what it is, what it is. and uh, But pretty much doesn't really need the BK to get this attack. So drops the Dragons and the Clan Castle Loons and Inventory Loons at an angle that uh, somehow they ended up going to the remaining AD. So it works out. It wasn't probably the, necessarily the best approach. But brought a lot of Balloons. And what that does is it just ends up providing a lot of extra tanking power and distraction for those single target defenses uh, allowing the dragons to kind of work their way through and so that was a good combination of loons and dragons has six left and some balloons and a ton of other troops and gets through that base no problem so good job there mr money and we'll go ahead and move up ladder here and this is uh we're looking at about a tier five base and we have tiger hawk again who is a tier six player um only has the level two dragons does have 200 capacity only the level one bk um so good choice here bringing the 105 or actually it's not even it's like a 99 or 98 dragoon uh with rages and heals and so Creating that funnel again, just trying to get everything working in a line across the base. It's looking really good there. Inventory loons and clan castle loons are going right to the core, exactly where they need to be. Rages up perfectly on the approach. Heal everything up as it approaches those ADs. And the second rage spell right in the core. One ADs down. The loons kind of get sidetracked and go sideways, and that could have been a little bit of trouble. But because that rage spell is taken care of and those dragons are sitting in the rage spell, that last one with a sliver of health left takes down that last AD. And that saves the raid there. If that AD was up, uh, this probably is not a three-star attack because you have that third AD firing on all those dragons. And they didn't have a whole lot of health left. Uh, but as it is, under the rage, they end up getting it done. And from there, it's just a matter of letting the drags go around and clean up. There's only a couple things left, a couple air traps and archer tower and tesla that can hurt the dragons but that barbarian king is kind of helping to clear the buildings faster with the help of the dragons and keeps that level one barb king up the entire raid so that is a great job just a sliver of health left on the bk builder hut in the corner and nice three star attack hitting up quite a ways above uh, above your pay grade as you might say sometimes uh, number seven base Seymour Kitties here is bringing an all-out hog attack. Um, and again, no clan castle troops to worry about, I don't think. But just to be safe, um, 
you know, you can tell ahead of time, obviously, if there are, but uh, does that just out of habit probably of doing the lure and sent the single hog in. Then just does a two finger drop from one corner. On these hashtag style bases that you see, uh, typically it's all Teslas in at least three of those four corners. This one was kind of more of a bait and switch type deal. Um, there was no Teslas there. They were all in the core as well as the giant bomb. So that's kind of a little interesting and different setup. Uh, but it did have a giant bomb there in the core. Skirts around that. Gets through the core with ease. And now it's just a matter of managing that last heel spell. And there's still quite a few defenses left. Uh, the hogs are in heel spell there. They get that archer tower down. Uh, he does bring the clan castle hogs. They kind of go around and do their thing, backed up by the BK and wizards. The rest of the defenses go down really quick. Um, but there is no hogs left. And so it, uh, there's one hog left there beating on the clan castle. And so it's going to be up to his kind of his backup kill squad to take care of the rest. Uh, luckily that hog will jump the wall and he starts going to work on the town hall while everything else is kind of stuck outside. And they're going to have to beat through walls and do that to get to the town hall. But you see that one lonely little hog, uh, two lonely little hogs there. And uh, that's enough to take that town hall out. And another nice three star attack. 39 hogs by Seymour Kitties. Good job. Moving on up to number five, we have Fat Cat Jr. bringing a Go WeHo attack. And this is by far one of my favorite attacks at Town Hall 8. Uh, it provides the tanking and DPS of a miniature Go Wipe, kind of, or Go Wee anyway. Um, plus the defensive attacking power of an all-out hog attack. And... Uh, because of that golem tanking all the defenses and the high hit points there, it's just a little safer than maybe your straight up hog attack. So I really like this attack. And he goes ahead and just drops his golem there. That golem takes the attention of the BK and all the defenses. It's got like 4,500 or 5,000 hit points, so it's going to stay up for a long time. And meanwhile, what it's doing is just attracting the attention. The wizards behind her allowing it to take out a couple of defenses. Probably didn't get a ton of bang for his buck there. Um, but it's going to just provide enough of a distraction to take out a few extra defenses that the hogs won't have to deal with now. So he did run over some giant bombs there right at the beginning. And so I had to drop a heal spell early. And that's always a danger of these bases that have a lot of openings, 2x2 two two openings, 2x4 two openings, that you just can't defuse giant bomb locations um, efficiently. You almost have to wait until they run over a few of them. Um, but he does run over a few at the beginning, gets them healed back up, and then he's got his clan castle witches uh, and BK saves for the top side. So again, just another approach, a little bit different. A lot of times you'll use that BK and the Witches behind the Golem on the initial approach with the Kill Squad. He saves it for the top side, realizing that his Hogs uh, may have a little trouble finishing the attack off once they get to the top of the base. Uh, so again, there's lots of different ways to do it. Every base is a little bit different, and that was a really neat approach to this one. Everything's down. We'll go ahead and fast forward it through. You can see he's just got a ton of hogs left. Because he waited, his BK is at full health. He's got both witches, and they provide all the cleanup necessary. So great job with that Go Weho attack for Fat Cat. Moving on up, you see this is kind of an interesting one here. Um... This is Seymour Kitties, and this is just a follow-up attack. This attack had already been three-starred, and he's dropping a celebratory poison spell early, I guess. Now he's just trying to get the BK with it. He doesn't have clan castle troops to worry about, um, but there's no... You see, the walls are all in the corner. I, I don't know if this is a troll base or what, or it's just whatever these guys do. They were kind of not really typical clan all the way around so it wasn't no clan castle troops and bases like this so uh, obviously you see that and uh you know we're gonna have to show Guy's attack on this too because that was 
uh, one that he really had to think through, and it wasn't quite as easy as this one because um, he had no choice as a Town Hall 7 uh, to, but to go with uh, kind of a hybrid air attack. And so we're going to look at that. We just saw that one done easily with a Go Weho, and uh, we're going to look at that same base uh, from the Lesser Gi with a uh, custom dragon attack. Okay, so here's that same base uh, you see, and here we have uh, the Lesser Gi, and he is a Town Hall 7, and due to some pre-scouting and second attack, he kind of knows what he's doing here, so he drops four giants there, followed by Clan Castle Hogs. They take care of the Tesla, they take care of the AD, he lights the middle AD, and so he's pretty much crippled this base against air. Uh, all he's got is that concentration of Archer Towers, Wiz Towers, and the remaining air defense. And so he just goes ahead and drops his drags, funnels them in there, and once that last AD down, is down, it is over. Because then activates that BK ability to start clearing some of those garbage and trash buildings around the outside. And everything's down there as far as ADs. They just got to get through the remaining uh, Archer Towers, and this thing is over. So again, level two dragons, but is able to bring kind of a custom army composition that is able to take out each air defense systematically and ends up with an easy three star. So really nice uh, thought through, planned out attack by the clan, helping Gi with this one and great execution by the lesser Gi. Has three dragons left, nothing else that can hurt them. And there we go, three star attack. So really good job there, Gi. Up to the number three base, we have Tristan here, again bringing an all-out hog attack. Uh, no clan castle troops to worry about, so he goes ahead and drops two-finger drop right off the get-go. And drops an early heal spell there for a potential giant bomb spot. Accidental second heal spell there. Uh, intentional, I believe, poison spell because the ground skellies are already chasing. And so that second heal spell was not on purpose. That third one is not in a very good location. If he had pulled that back down to the bottom and the right a little bit, he could have covered his hogs for a little more time. But as it is, uh, they stay in the heal spell there long enough. He's still got his clan castle max hogs to come save the day. Just, uh, there's still four defenses left there, so it's kind of uh, tricky, but you see down here, giant bombs down at the bottom, and that's what's gonna hurt the hog attack is the giant bombs. They had him in a really dumb spot down there at the bottom. And so no impact on the hogs whatsoever. A lot of flip traps there right at the end. Uh, they go ahead and take down that last archer tower. And now they got to fight the rest of the skellies there. Goes ahead and takes down the last one. There's still a couple two to four hogs there. And they're going to be able to help with the cleanup along with a handful of wizards. And again, so a couple of misplaced spells, um, but still was able to pull it through because of kind of poor base setup and whatnot, and brings a nice uh, three-star hog attack for the second war in a row. So really good job there. Those hog attacks are looking good, Tristan. Last two attacks are going to be by Clan Leader Awesome Sauce here uh, on the number two base here, bringing a Go Weho attack. And you see he just starts out by creating the funnel with four minions. Uh, there's only ground targeting defenses there with those cannons that can reach out there. So it brings the minions instead of uh, some other sort of troop, uh, wizards and that kind of thing. Drops the golem there. Wizards create finish creating the funnel there. Breaks in the wall, backed up by the archer queen and the BK, as well as the wizards and witches. And they just start going to work on the bottom part of the base there. Heal everything up uh, in that big cluster of defenses there so that they last. And two finger hog drop from the outside helps work with the kill squad and start taking out defenses really quickly around them so those witches and wizards stay alive. Heal spells all the way up through the approach to the core and then on the way out. Drops that last one up towards the top there. Uh, two giant bombs there because the hogs it wasn't a true double giant bomb set, but because they hit it from both sides, they basically tripped it as if it was a double giant bomb, and it does end up taking out that whole pack of hogs there. Luckily, they weren't all there. There's still a handful of them left, and they take out that last defense. 
work their way over to the cannon and from there it's just a matter of cleanup. Heroes are pretty much at full strength and this Town Hall 8 base is nuked. So another example there of a Go Weho attack uh, with the Town Hall 8.5 hitting down, but you can kind of see how uh, the impact of having that extra tank and kill squad with the hogs just working uh, alongside them, how powerful that is. And lastly, the number one base uh, was a Town Hall 9, uh, premature level 3 queen, level 9 BK, and again bringing a Go Weho attack. And so, second time we're going to get to see this Go Weho attack from a Town Hall 8.5, uh, bringing four heal spells, covers pretty much the entire defensive portion of the base with four spells because of how compact they are. You see the wizards are creating the funnel there. Golem is distracting uh, all those defenses plus the enemy Archer Queen. Drops in the heroes behind. We have minions over here kind of helping create the funnel on the top right. And now the BK engages the enemy Archer Queen. She's down, activates his ability, and heal everything up as they approach the core. Once she's taken down, Again, as we saw in a couple other attacks, two finger hog drop kind of from the flanks there. And then just keeping them healed up the whole way. A couple pockets there where there's some two by three openings where there could be single giant bombs. There is on that one. There is on that side too. So those uh, heal spells in the right spot keep the hogs uh, from dying and heal them back up. One more two by three spot at the bottom where there could be a giant bomb and uh, goes ahead and drops that poison spell on the skellies and the enemy BK and there was a giant bomb in that bottom spot as well so great scouting there covered uh, all the potential giant bomb spots with heal spells and ends up keeping those hogs alive till the end all the defenses are down BK's down and there's nothing from stopping this raid from being a three star and there we go great go we ho attack a lot of those uh, Straight Hogs and Go Weho attacks featured in this war, and uh, you see how good those are at three-starring some of these opponents. So, really nice job, great war, um, good job to everybody in the clan. Third perfect war, 45 to 5 uh, against a level 6 clan, even though we're not quite sure how they ever got to level 6. Uh, that doesn't take anything away from another perfect war. So, great attacks, keep it up. And we will see you next time, hopefully for a fourth perfect war.